Revelations 20, 11 through to 15. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. This passage of Scripture speaks to your soul. There is something about this passage of Scripture that even the conscious of an unbeliever knows this day is coming. Does this passage of Scripture not put the fear of the Lord in you? Look at how God is described. Him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. The one who sits on the throne is none other than the Lord Almighty. Words cannot describe Him. Our mind cannot comprehend Him. And this verse in the book of Revelation reveals to us the most momentous day in the history of mankind. The day where all nations will be gathered before Him. This is the great white throne judgment. This is a day which we cannot avoid. It doesn't matter if you run to the east or to the west, you will stand before Him. There are those who will be judged on this day, and there are those who will only bear witness of this day, and they are the children of God. The children of God will not be judged here. Our privilege is to be the children of God. Listen to how we are instructed to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, only a child can call a father, Father. Is he your father? Is God your father? It's so sad to see the amount of people who call God Father because someone else told them they should call him Father. They don't know God as a father out of their own relationship with God. God is not the father of all. He is only the father of those that he begets. And that happens at the new birth. Have you been born again? If so, God is your Father. And the wrath of God is not for you. You are His child. But there is a lie that God is the Father of all. No, He is not. He is the Creator of all, but not the Father of all. And the great white throne judgment is for those who are not His children. This is a day which we cannot avoid. It doesn't matter if you run to the east or to the west, you will stand before Him. You cannot outrun a God who can speak whole worlds out of nothing. You cannot outrun a God with whom all things exist. You cannot outrun a God with whom His omnipresence covers the whole face of the earth. It's nothing to Him to raise the dead and to bring them to the judgment seat, so that they may speak to Him about the way they've lived, and thought, and spoken, and acted. And God, the great King, and the only potentate, guarantees that every evil word will be remembered. Every evil act will be called to account. Every evil thought will be published openly. We don't know how long this day will be, because it will be eternity. So, if God chooses, He could go through the life of all the billions of people that have ever lived and go through each of their lives at its present speed. So, He could take 24 hours to examine 24 hours. Just think how different we would live our lives if we had this idea in our minds. I am asking you to live in such a way that you know you will have to give account one day of your life. Greed has no good consequence. We must therefore desist from it if we find ourselves guilty. 
avarice is an old problem. Jeremiah 6.13 For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. And from the prophet, even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. Luke 12, 16-20 And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This I will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? This is a profound passage of Scripture. It shows to us the foolishness of greed. In one single night, all the man's accomplishments and plans were ruined. He made business plans and life plans. This man was a go-getter. He was an overachiever, a driven individual who aimed high and hit his targets. The more he had, the more he wanted. He wanted to be in control of his future and lived for the here and the now. He was in control of his earthly future, but he could not control the day of his death. And that is what greed will do to you. Greed will occupy your time so much so that you will only focus on the here and the now. Greed will occupy your mind so much that you don't think about where you are going in eternity. Eternity means nothing to a greedy person. This is why God calls this man a fool. It is foolish to focus on a temporary life and ignore your eternal life. It is foolish to make preparations for this life and not to make preparation for eternity. Look again at this parable. This night, this night, this night, there was no warning prior. This night thy soul shall be required of thee. There was no prior warning for this man in this parable. This night. I am preaching this message more to myself than you. I am guilty of this. Being so preoccupied with the here and the now. Focusing on working more hours than focusing on my relationship with God. I find time for everything else, but not for the things of the Lord. Are you finding yourself working 24-7 and struggle to find time with the Lord? Are you guilty of this? Have you started to prioritize acquiring the riches of this world instead of prioritizing eternity? No man ever lived on this earth like our Lord Jesus Christ. No one preached about eternity like our Lord Jesus Christ. He focused on eternity, and he was clear that in eternity there are two destinations, heaven and hell. And time and time again in the Gospels, we hear him describing heaven and hell, using words for heaven like heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the narrow gate, Enter life, my father's house, mansion, the father's house. Jesus spoke about heaven, and he also spoke about hell, using words like this to describe hell. Everlasting fire, hell fire, utter darkness, darkness, the fire that shall never be quenched, weeping and gnashing of teeth, wailing and gnashing of teeth eternal damnation, damnation, the place of darkness. Jesus spoke of eternity like no other man. Why? Because only the Lord Jesus could understand the length of eternity. 
our human minds cannot comprehend that. Forever. Can you grasp that idea and concept of forever? Our mind cannot understand that. But the Lord Jesus Christ could. He could. Yes, He could. John 8, 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. The Lord Jesus Christ did not come into existence in Bethlehem of Judah. He has always been here, from eternity past to eternity future. He has always been here. The Greek term for unto the ages of the ages is eistos eanos ton eanon, unto the ages of the ages. Our life in the Bible described as vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. We can't understand eternity. We can't relate to it because all we know is this life. But Lord Jesus Christ understood eternity. He had an understanding of eternity that no other person could have. And time and time again, we see him warning humanity, pleading with humanity about eternity. Don't focus on the here and the now. Focus on eternity.